Okay, moving on to the next team in the SEC that we will be going over today. This is going to be the team that I have projected to come in fourth in this year's Southeastern Conference, and that would be Will Wade and his LSU Tigers. And it's crazy because it seems like just yesterday I was out here on this podcast talking to you guys about the American gangster and everything Will Wade has done since he's become the head coach of LSU. And I do remember that LSU team a couple years ago. I did think that if Will Wade was coaching in the NCAA tournament, I do think there was a very good chance that that LSU Tiger team would actually have a chance to make a legitimate run. And unfortunately, we never know how that would have ended if he was their coach in the tournament. But at the same time, I just remember saying to myself, that LSU team two years ago did not look the same once Will Wade was not coaching their games anymore. And last year, Will Wade did return to the sideline for the Tigers. And LSU had a solid season. They were in position to make the NCAA tournament for the second straight year. And Will Wade does deserve credit. I've said it once. I'll say it again. How Will Wade got all of these guys to his school, I'm not sure. But how many times have we seen coaches who cheat to bring in talent and still are not able to win games? And I feel like last year, Will Wade was really able to do that. He was really able to bring in guys in order for his team to succeed. And that was when they lost a bunch of players from that team two years ago. But he was able to bring in guys like Trendon Watford and... Uh, like Sharif O'Neal this year, who I think are going to be able to make a significant impact. Now, unfortunately, if you are an LSU fan, they do lose a little bit from last year's squad. That starts off with Skylar Mays, who was one of the most underrated players in college basketball. And he really, to me, demonstrated everything what a four-year senior in college basketball should look like. He got better each and every one of his four seasons in Baton Rouge. And I do think he's going to be a guy who was really able to create a shot. And I do think he's going to be a guy that LSU will really miss going forward forward this season and then they also lose um Emmett Williams the 6'6 sophomore and it's funny because even though Emmett Williams was 6'6 I do believe he was really able to give these LSU Tigers a consistent identity last year LSU was known for just being able to rebound and crush you on the glass and that was what they were really able to do last year and I'm curious to see if this season they're going to be able to do the same thing without a guy like Emmett Williams. But even though LSU does lose those two guys, I do think this whole draft process could have been much worse for them because they easily could have lost even more guys. Luckily for them, Darius Days, Javante Smart, and Trendon Watford, three guys that all easily could have left, could have went to the NBA. Who knows if they would have gotten drafted or not. But those three guys, I think, all eventually have NBA caliber potential. And then they also bring in Cam Thomas, the 6'4 freshman who is known to be just a straight shot creator. And I think even though he could be a little erratic at times, and I'm very curious to see if him and Javante Smart playing in the same backcourt will work, I think that is a guy that could make a big time impact for this LSU Tiger team just because he is a guy that could create his own shot, which to be honest, last year when I was watching this LSU Tiger squad, that was something that I thought they lacked. Uh, many different times last season. But Trendon Watford is one guy that I wanted to talk about. And I do think that when you look at Trendon Watford and the way he played last season, I do think that he's one of the more underrated players in college basketball. And I do think there is potential for him this year to maybe even win SEC Player of the Year, maybe as a little bit of a dark horse, because I think this year he's going to have a much bigger role and he's going to have a lot of the offense centered and focused around him. And then as the season goes on, LSU is actually going to be bringing in two eligible transfers uh, in Josh LeBlanc and Sharif O'Neal. I've always been a big fan of Josh LeBlanc and his game since he's been at Georgetown. He obviously hasn't played basketball in about a year now, so I'm going to be curious to see what exactly he looks like. And same with Sharif O'Neal. He... Uh, had tra had to transfer in from UCLA with the heart condition. He ultimately was not able to make uh, his way onto the court for the UCLA Bruins. But I do think playing at the same school at his, as his dad, playing for a coach like Will Wade, I'm curious to see the kind of impact that Sharif has right away. And it's weird because LSU last year, right? 
I feel like you look at their resume and you're going to say, oh yeah, they had a pretty solid season for especially a team like LSU that doesn't really have, besides Shaq, that rich of a basketball history. But I was very high on LSU going into last year. I thought they were a legitimate top 15 team. And I'm not going to say they were disappointing because they were very up and down. They did win a lot of games that were considered to be big time wins, but they started just eight and four in non-conference play. They lost close games to VCU, Utah State, East Tennessee State, and USC. But then all of a sudden they start eight and zero in SEC play. But once the calendar flipped to February and the conference schedule became much more difficult, they ended the season four and six and finished three games behind Kentucky. And I remember vividly watching the Kentucky Wildcats go into the Maravich Center last year. And I remember just very early into that game, just saying to myself, all right, this game's a wrap. I just cannot see LSU winning. They didn't look like they were even in the same league as Kentucky that day. And really since that night, I've kind of been a little concerned about this LSU team. There are people that when you look at their SEC power rankings, they're going to have LSU three. And I have them at four just because I'm a little uncertain about the fit of Javante Smart and Cam Thomas playing together. Both of those guys are super erratic with the ball, and I'm just curious to see what exactly their shot selection is like. Also, LSU was not good at all on the defensive side of the ball last year, and they couldn't hang on to the ball either. I feel like in order for this LSU team to improve and reach their ceiling, they're really going to have to improve on the defensive side of the ball. And to be honest, now that Emmett Williams is not in the mix here, I'm not necessarily sure if they could do that. Now, I like a 4-5 front court of Darius Days and Trendon Watford. I think that would be a pretty good unit. And hopefully Cam Thomas, along with Charles Manning Jr., the 6'5 senior, who will be the other main contributor coming back for this LSU team. He averaged 8-3 and three last year, along with one assist. I do think that he could be a guy that is in for a little bit of a bigger role this season. And then they bring in some freshmen, including uh, Jalen Cook, the 6-foot freshman guard. He could be a guy that I've heard some good things about. I think he could be a guy that plays right away. Same with Josh Gray, the 7-foot freshman as well. So I'm curious to see how exactly... Exactly, Will Wade manages all these different guys on the same floor. And it's funny because LSU, this is the second straight season that they should be in the same range, right? Around that top 25-ish tier. And their talent is very good. And Will Wade is a very good coach. I do feel like he does get made fun of a lot just because of who he is and the history he's had in the past. But they need to improve on the defensive side of the ball. They need to improve to not turn the ball over. And if they do that, I think they could be a top 20, a top 15 team. I do expect LSU to be a tournament team this year. But to be honest, I'm going to expect kind of a similar season to last year. I think they'll barely get in. They'll barely make the cut above the bubble, I should say. I just want to see if Javante Smart and Cam Thomas at all could be a little more efficient. And I feel like if they can and Wadford and Days are clicking, that's ultimately how LSU will be at their best. I'm just not necessarily sure if I see that happening this season.